It's time for In Bed with Jed. bed with Jed. I'm Jed Ryan, and today we are not in my bedroom as usual. We are in my living room, which has become sort of a makeshift fitness center of sorts. We we're all uh, wondering how we could keep in shape, both mentally and physical, while the gyms are closed, while the indoor swimming pools are closed, while we can't go to our workout classes, whether they be yoga or Zumba or whatever classes you may go to. And I have a very special guest today, someone who I have been waiting to talk to for months. I don't think it's been quite a year yet, but it's close because uh, I'm not going to tell you who it is, though, because I'm going to let you sweat it out for a little bit because uh, that does kind of fit with the theme of today's show, staying in shape. And again, mentally and physically, the two go hand in hand. But I will tell you that uh, this gentleman is uh, a fitness and wellness expert. And a lot of people sometimes ask me, because I'm a healthcare professional, fitness and health and nutrition questions, and I try and uh, help them as best I can. But I like to defer to the expert sometimes. And in this case, this is someone who is an expert, and he has some very great credentials. He is a nutrition and lifestyle coach, a native of Brooklyn, and he formed PAWD, that's P-A-W-E-D, PAWD New York and Beyond, the Bear Wellness Club. And with the pandemic, his classes have gone from live in the studio two online, and he currently has three online classes a week. He's got Bear Yoga, he's got Bear Wellness, and he also has meditation. So he is keeping busy. Everybody, please welcome my friend, John Fisher. John, thank you for joining us. <laughs> oh, it's good to be here. I appreciate chatting with you, and uh, it's good to just be hanging out in my bed after working at nine to five. So I'm happy to be here. <laughs> Well, thank you for that. And uh, and actually, I think you have an online class today, later, don't you? I do. So yeah, after this, I, I'm, I'm also launching a uh, podcast, um, which may be called The Podcast, you know, based after my group pod. Um, so I have an interview after that. And then um, at 8 p.m., um, we have bare meditation. Wow. Well, I'm getting like uh, I'm getting tired just hearing that, and uh, we haven't even like started talking about uh, exercise yet. <laughs> so, if I if I, if I don't fall asleep in the meantime, well, yeah. <laughs> well, how have you been coping with the pandemic? How has life during lockdown been treating you? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, I was actually chatting with um, a few colleagues today. I work in an online nutrition school, and we're just reflecting upon the time and it's like, it's hard to believe that we've gone through three full seasons or three seasons. Actually. It's like, you know, we started in early March and the winter all of spring we were in lockdown and now we're in summer. So I feel like luckily because I'm such a summer person, things have gotten a little bit better and kind of eased up and some of the anxiety started to, you know, be dismantled as we go into the warmer weather. Um, but yeah, it was tough. I mean, I have, um, you know, anxiety, I have panic disorder. So, you know, as the pandemic was coming in like February, March and through April, it was just like high alert. Everything was a struggle. I had to like really put a lot of the tools and tactics that I have, you know, in my coaching that I've picked up over the years to the test. Um, and luckily kind of got through it okay. And am now able to like, you know, take advantage of the nicer weather and be in nature and go to the beach and do the things that calm my nervous system down. So leaving the city a few times for long weekends has definitely helped. It, like, you know, my nervous system was able to take a bit of a rest. Yeah, yeah, I know. And you mentioned when we talked before about anxiety, a anxiety is, uh, and about self-care. Now, anxiety and depression, I imagine during the pandemic, first of all, anxiety and depression go hand in hand. They're unfortunately best friends and they go hand in hand. And during the time when there are less options available, a lot of people do feel trapped, they feel helpless. The ways that we would normally cope with stress, like going to the gym, like meeting friends, uh, seeing uh, plays or movies, they're taken away. So we have to find other ways to segue, not only segue the creative energy, but also to take care of ourselves. Like you mentioned self-care. 
both physical and emotional, and they both kind of go hand in hand, right? Oh, completely. And yeah, as we were talking about earlier, it's like, I think in normal times, self-care just seems kind of like a little maintenance thing where it's like, I'll get a pedicure, I'll take a bath. Um, <laughs> but I think as we, you know, go through a pandemic and, you know, the economy is crashing, it's like, you have to really do things to take care of yourself um, and figure yeah. out how to keep yourself grounded and, you know, not only just do self-care, but also, you know, seek out health professionals as needed. Um, and to kind of just throw, it's like throwing the spaghetti at the wall, like everything <laughs> possible. And then just like, if something works, then great. Um, so, yeah, and I think, you know, you mentioned my classes earlier, maybe we'll talk about them a little bit later, but that's helped me just having like, you know, it's almost self-serving. It's like I had all these classes built into my week. So like every day or two I knew, okay, I'm going to work out or I'm going to do yoga or I'm going to meditate. And I'm also going to connect with my community, which I think is helpful. So, um, yeah, I, I'm glad you brought those up. And I, I smiled when you said they're best friends. I just like the idea, like the imagery of them hanging out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, uh, you're this. Yeah, you're a busy guy, obviously. So what was it like going from the studio? And I, I have not attended one of your classes yet, but I do know the studio. And what is it like going from the studio to having classes online, having virtual classes? What has that been like for you? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, for my group, um, there's a few classes that I facilitate personally. Um, you know, being a health coach, I'm into, you know, mental and physical health. And the things that I gravitated towards were, you know, outside of like the yoga and things that I have instructors come in to facilitate were like cuddle piles. Cuddle piles were my favorite thing ever. Um, so obviously we can't do those any longer as we all go remote. Um, so for me personally, that was a, kind of a strange transition, but the good thing is I have a number of instructors that are in my, um, you know, orbit or whatever, who are willing to jump in and do classes weekly. So somehow we were able to kind of pivot really fast from doing like all, all live classes to, you know, have my personal trainer who is just like set up and ready to go. He was doing fitness classes. I had an amazing yoga teacher who was doing classes every week. Um, and, and then it was kind of an adjustment to kind of figure out what people wanted to do and what they're interested in and what their schedules were like. Um, so it was a bit of a learning curve. I would say like through the end of March into like, April and into May. Um, so yeah, it's been an adjustment. I don't know. It's so many, it's like thinking about March seems like years ago, right? <laughs> yes, but I just, I just remember if I'm like, again, I'm reflecting back of just like having this feeling of like, okay, I need to serve my community. I also want to support my instructors and make sure they're bringing in some income. So we set up all these donation based classes and it felt like a sprint. It was like, we we're doing like six to eight a week. Um, so I kind of burned out a little bit too, where I had to kind of dial it back and be like, okay, I need to take care of myself. Um, but it's been good. And I think um, the best part is, the, you know, the sense of community that is still intact because we have amazing guys who come to our classes in New York City and they've been coming for years and to all of a sudden not have that community, I think would be detrimental. So the fact that we can all get on a Zoom and do yoga together and kind of chat and still feel connected was great. And then also it expanded the reach to people beyond New York. So we would do classes wow. and yeah. we'd have guys from California or Canada or like Florida. And uh, that was really cool to see some new faces and kind of bring them into our, into our group. Yeah. And that's when it, I assume that's when it became Pod Bear, you know, Pod New York City and beyond, huh? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I'm, 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 I'm constantly trying to rebrand. I forget how to like brand everything. And I'm in the midst of kind of rebranding coach cub which is like my coaching brand and then below that like the group and then the pot the podcast um but yeah i would say like maybe in a april as more and more guys were joining my facebook group from all over the place i was like let me change it to be more inclusive not just new york so i talked on the and beyond well you might have some guys in your class from countries you never even heard of before now so <laughs> like yeah i would love that i mean i had somebody I think from Switzerland, who was, t who was chatting with me, with me on uh, W Bear, who was asking about our yoga class. I'm like, what's well, that 7.15 p.m. Eastern time? It might be a little late for you. But he was like, no, nah, 
it's like midnight or 1 a.m. and he would he said he would join so we'll see if he attends this week nice nice now the gyms are closed and in new york city where we are nobody knows when they're going to open there's no plan as i said some outdoor pools are open some beaches are open so you can go swimming but the indoor pools are closed and uh you know a lot of people don't have access to uh, their fitness classes the same way they used to you know even uh, personal training sessions you know that might have that may be on hold for some people so we make do you know thankfully we're adaptable i have my uh you know for weights i have my uh <laughs> milk milk jugs and uh again you know they only uh, you can only make them so heavy but you can fill them up with sand which is free if you're at the beach but sand can be expensive if you're buying it in the store so this is actually cat litter which works well and I do remember uh, trying to find some dumbbells, but the only ones I found were uh, the really small ones that come in that uh, pre-box set. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these are only eight pounds. So again, you can only uh, do so much with them. But right, but you look good. You look good with a Batman T on and doing the weights. <laughs> oh, <laughs> your, thank you so much. On your lips, so yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I want to ask you, as an expert. Uh, people want to know how they can keep in shape. So what would you, uh, what would you tell them pretty much? You know, uh, what are some other ways that you can keep in shape while you can't go to the gym? And yeah. I'm sorry, you're gone. Mm -hmm. Oh, I said, uh, what were some of the ways that people can uh, keep in shape while the gyms are closed? Yeah. Um, I think it's a good question. I mean, one, it's, I would say it would be good to take the pressure off of yourself to get in shape. You know, it's like we're in a pandemic and it's obviously having goals are important, but I think also just like having self-compassion and realizing that, you know, you're not going to be able to work out maybe the way you want to. Um, so I think that's one, like a good first step is just, you know, relinquishing that feeling of I need to be fit. Um, but, you know, I know I typically work with a different population who don't necessarily work out very often. Um, but I'm all about doing simple things like go for a walk after lunch start there um i work out with my personal trainer and we do very simple exercises that anyone can do from home and it's like i, I think we've overcomplicated exercise to some degree so it's like just do push-ups do sit-ups do squats you know do plank um and and build a routine so i think that's also really big where you know i think people have lofty goals they want to work out all the time but it's maybe stepping back and asking like what are you doing right now and if you're doing nothing, then it's like, we'll go for a walk. Maybe from <laughs> yes, there, it's like, do, you know, wake up and do 10 push-ups. Um, it doesn't have to be super complicated. And I work out with a trainer, um, you know, a CrossFit um, train trainer um, who does my classes, but also I work out with him personally. And everything we do is super simple. I think the most complicated he'll have you do is like, you know, if you want to move on from just the jugs of cat, uh, kitty litter, <laughs> uh, just getting a backpack, you know, getting a backpack and filling it up. So start filling up with the like, books and cans and different things and use that to kind of, um, you know, you could do sit-ups with it, um, do presses with it, uh, and just use things around your room. I mean, I've also been in classes where I'll have, you, I'll have a six stacks of books and just lift those. Um, so, I mean, those are good things. Um, you know, I think, you know, if you run, people can get out and go running now in most places. Uh, obviously, if you're in a place where it's, you know, a high risk or you're in lockdown, don't do that or definitely wear a mask regardless. Um, but I think those would be great places to start. And then also, there's so much online. You know, there's so many classes that are free that you can take advantage of now. Um, so do those. Um, and there's also a lot of different, like, simple apps that you can use. So yeah. there's like the New York Times, like seven minute workout. It's like, start there. Um, but I'm really all about, you know, starting small and building from there and also just building consistency. Yeah, yeah. Little by little does the trick. And again, it's kind of like progress, not perfection. And I know they, those may sound cliche, but they are definitely true. And, you know, the other, when I did go to the gym, I remember they were making a bunch of kids were making fun of this guy and all that uh, because he was, you know, clearly like very overweight, got out of breath very easily. Mm. And one of them said something like, oh, why is he even here? 
And I normally mind my own business, <laughs> but I just couldn't let this go. And I said, well, maybe for him, it's a big deal just coming here and just getting started. So we all have to start somewhere. So no one is going to make fun of you. If they do, that's their own problem. No one's going to make fun of you for wanting to take better care of yourself. You know, so yeah, little by little, I think it does the trick. I really do. So. Yeah, I, I agree. And I think like to that point, you know, and I work with, I coach a lot of men who have, you know, the gym is a bad connotation. It's like, they remember, you know, gym class growing up and being overweight and being made fun of, um, you know, it, gyms are also kind of masculine. So if you're, I work primarily with gay men, it's like, there's a lot of things stacked against you if you're a bigger gay man going into a gym. So, I mean, one, if you can get in, that's amazing. Oftentimes my goal with my clients are like, just go. You don't even have to work out. Just go into the gym. You know what I mean? Like, just to, like, break through that. Um, but I think this is, this pandemic provides, like, a unique opportunity where, you know, everything is done at home. So you can work out and you can do a class and, you know, keep your Zoom camera off if you're anxious about that. Or for me, it's like, and I make, I make this joke sometimes when we do our yoga class, it's like, you can fart and you're on mute so nobody hears it. You know, like, <laughs> it's, it could be a little bit liberating. Uh, at times. Well, no one would know who it was anyway, right? I mean, uh, oh, it was that box, you know. Uh, <laughs> right, right. Your, your box turns uh, green. No, but like everyone's, <laughs> on my classes, everyone's muted. So it's like, which is kind of nice because you, so you can just kind of do your own thing. I think even with something like yoga, although, yeah, there's, you know, the cliches of like progress on perfection or like it's a practice, not a perfect or whatever people say in yoga classes. It's like, it's hard not to still criticize yourself and to kind of, you know, compare yourself to others when you're in the yoga class even. But when you're home and you're just doing it on your own, it, can, it really is an individual practice, which is, I think is what yoga is meant to be. Yes, yes. It's funny because I was going to ask you about yoga. So I uh, was telling you before, I went to my first yoga. Well, it wasn't my first class, but I had gone to a class that my friend was giving and I assumed it was a beginner's class, and it wasn't, because he was using a lot of terminology that I didn't know, and a lot of words, presumably in Sanskrit, that I just didn't understand, a lot of terms, and even, like, some things just went past me. He's like, you know, like, okay, you know, you got to, uh, you know, balance yourself on the ball, the ball of your foot, the ball, the ball, and I just blanked, and I'm a nurse, too, I should know what that is, but, you know, and then finally he just got frustrated, he's like, ball, right here, the ball of your foot, you know. <laughs> Not the deal, the ball. All right. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, of course, I was, I was a little embarrassed. But uh, what would you say for someone that uh, wants to attend a yoga class for the first time but doesn't know anything about it, for example? Like, uh, if they, you know, they may be a little apprehensive. Yeah, I mean, same thing for the gym. It's like if you just get to the class, like, that's the goal. You know, you don't have to do anything. Just if, if it's in person, just get there walk in um if it's an online same thing at least just sign up and go i think it's it, it's so anxiety inducing just getting into a class so be proud of yourself celebrate all the things that you're doing well and you know all your little victories so it's like getting to the class great pat yourself on the back um i think you know don't be afraid to tell the instructor that you are new you know and if you have questions ask them i think what i've seen a lot with yoga instructors you know, even ones that have come to do bear classes for me, some, it's, it's the same with personal trainers. You kind of want to prove yourself and you want to make things complicated or show what you know. Yes. So finding a class that's really meant for beginners and an instructor who has a gentle approach, I think is really important. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, it's so hard. Any advice you have is really hard. It's easier said than done. So it's like, you know, remember that, you know, it's a practice you're, it's something brand new. I think a lot of times we start something and we think we're, we want to be great at it fast. It's like, the, I know yoga instructors who've been teaching for a decade who still can't, you know, stretch as well as if you went to like some studio and some girl on the Upper East Side, you know, who can do, you know, <laughs> back. so it's like, that's not the end goal. It's really about showing up and being present and like slowly improving incrementally and remembering that, you know, each day is different, so really check in with yourself and how you're feeling, what your energy is like, how you slept. It's like all these things are variables that people don't take into consideration. You want to just like show up and be pretty good at something. 
Um, so it's kind of getting, it's like getting comfortable being uncomfortable, even though that's another cliche. We're full of them today. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, now you also mentioned like you do, uh, even long walks are good. Uh, sometimes like out of a necessity, again, you know, uh, there's no, if you're lucky enough to go to a gym that has an indoor running track, <laughs> a lot of them don't, but, uh, or you're, you live near like an outdoor track, but most of us, we have to go jogging through the streets, which is not necessarily a bad thing. I know for myself, like I have discovered a new, some new places in my neighborhood that I did not know exist because I would go out jogging at night when the sun went down and I actually found like a few little mini shops and markets that I had no idea existed on Queens Boulevard where I live. And it's like, wow, was this here the whole time? And I've lived here uh, so many years. And to me, it was like almost like a message. It's like, okay, sometimes when you uh, go beyond your, uh, the road less traveled, you'll find some new things. And in New York City, New York is one of those cities where there could be places that existed for years and we walk past them every day and we had no idea they existed. There's neighborhoods we don't even know about still because we just never go there. <laughs> so. Oh, totally. I, I've been going out walking a lot because I, plot twist, like in June, I sprained my ankle. I was out of this city oh. in the Poconos and <clears throat> sprained my ankle. I was like, fantastic. <laughs> oh, um, um, it's like healing and fine, but um, you know, I go, on, I go out walking. I can't really run now, but um, you know, I even found like this little luncheonette, this little like cute hamburger place on one walk. I was like, I didn't, I've walked by this, you know, a million times in the last like few years. Uh, didn't even know that it was there. So again, I think, yeah, I think overall just, I, I'm really reluctant to find all the good that ha has happened in the pandemic because I think that will probably happen in the wake of it potentially. <laughs> you know, I saw a lot of like yoga instructors and people being like, I'm so grateful for this. And it's like, okay, well, people are still dying and you know, it's not great. But I think also you can find the positives, you know, and I think one of the positives is that at least for people in New York, it's really slowed us down to a halt, you know, and you, you're not running around to go to brunch and go to into the Manhattan to work and have a million plans. It's like, oh, I actually can just go for a walk and explore my neighborhood and be fine with that. So I think that it's a really cool, um, you know, benefit to come out of this for sure. Not having to be in a million places at once or having to be in all five boroughs in the same day. <laughs> oh, completely. And I think like early on, it was like everyone was rushing to be on Zoom calls and Zoom happy hours. And it was like a hyper connection, I think, in the beginning. And that's kind of eased up. So now it's like, OK, you can really just be with yourself and, you know, explore and do things that you want to do, which I think is really helpful. Right, right. Now, you're, you're, um, you're, um, classes pretty much kind of cater to the uh, bear community or uh, they're, I mean, they're, forever, they're kind of uh, tailor made for the bear community. What is it about our community that, what kind of like things uh, make it special, like make your fitness classes special for the bears there? So. Yeah, it's a good I, question. I mean, I think it's just that, it, you know, it's, well, one, it's a community that I was drawn to, uh, especially when I came out let's say 12 years ago. And um, I was actually much scrawnier for a while. And I think for a while people were wondering why I was part of this community, but um, <laughs> you know, it's not just about body size. I think it's about personality and interests. And um, it did feel like a welcoming community to some extent. I don't think I would always say the same now, you know, it's, most communities end up <laughs> being a little bit judgmental, but I think, um, you know, it's just the community that I felt home in. Um, and then I've also kind of beefed up. So I'm like, I'm a little, my body's changed a little bit since then. Um, but, so you know, so I've been coaching bears when I started health coaching six years ago. And then that kind of turned into running meetup groups for bears where we had picnics and things. And then that led to creating pod. So like this little journey I've been on. Um, but I think, I think it's a community that's not, necessarily serve with wellness type events you know I think um there aren't necessarily cl like classes that bears feel comfortable going into whether it's fitness at the gym or yoga classes um and I think when you're not you know when externally you're not getting messages like these things are for you it's easy to just kind of dismiss them um, but these are things that are for everybody, you know, meditations for everyone, yoga is for everyone, fitness is for everyone. Um, so it's just finding ways to 
cater to that kind of demographic and, and also just show them examples of different people who look like them, who do do yoga all the time. Or I just did a podcast with a guy who's a bear who ran a hundred mile ultra marathon. That's, oh, wow. you know, a pound guy. So it's like, I think it's just, you know, you need to see, you know, other people who are doing these types of things. So um, yeah, so it's special for many reasons, but I think, you know, it's interesting that, you know, there's a whole body positivity movement and, you know, I think people of a bigger body, you know, may feel insecure at times about what they look like. And there's many, you know, that's many deep seated issues there. And um, a lot of them are really terrible, but just one little anecdote that I have from doing classes, you know, for three or four years is that I've brought instructors in who do classes for men who are really trim and fit, uh -huh. um, who may come and do like, you know, a massage class for my group. Um, who are like, you guys are way more liberated, you know, you're way more comfortable and you wouldn't expect it, but you're way more comfortable than when I do a massage class or some other class for men who are just all have six packs because they're all comparing themselves to each other too. Uh, <laughs> and they're actually really reserved. So I don't know. It's a, I just think it's a great community and it's, I felt welcome in it and I, not that I need to s provide anything or serve the community back, but I just feel like that's kind of my mission. So I'm um, I'm kind of figuring out figuring all out as I go, basically. Right, right. Well, people are more apt to join a group or go to classes if they feel that uh, there are people like them there, and if there is a sense of community. So I think it's a great thing. Wow. <laughs> oh, completely. And just to like kind of tie back to your story about being at the gym, it's like I don't know. It crushes my heart to feel like somebody is going to a gym to feel better and to work out. Mm -hmm. And while you're in that space doing that thing, people are belittling you. So, um, I don't know. It's a terrible thing. And I, I think I'm just in a unique position. Maybe it's not that unique, but I feel like, you know, feeling a little bit different at times growing up as a child, as most gay people do, but then also my dad came out when I was younger too. So like I kind of got to observe how he was treated. And I think I just have some kind of self-awareness and acknowledgement of other people and empathy that I've always just seen how people with bigger bodies are mistreated. And it, it really irks me to no end. So um, that also kind of drives me of like, I want to create things for men with bigger bodies and also open it up to anyone. So it's like an umbrella of like, if you have a bigger body, you're welcome here. Or if you don't feel welcome in the gay community in general or the queer community in general, this is a space for you to come. And because we've kind of set that tone, we have, we have people of all different body types, all different shades, all different backgrounds who do feel welcome in our group. Um, and that kind of drives me too to know that like, you know, you can be in the gay community and you can not be welcome because of what your skin color is or your age or your size. And like, that's to me is BS. So um, I think the more spaces and more conversations like you're having, um, too, the better. I think it, it adds support and inclusivity to a group that should be inclusive. Yes, exactly. And we forget that, too. It's kind of ironic that as a group, uh, you know, the LGBTQ community as a whole, theoretically, we should be more welcoming and pretty much throw away the labels and not be so judgmental. But unfortunately, <laughs> it's subdivisions <laughs> within our culture and uh, they can be they can be uh, just as repressive sometimes, unfortunately. So, <laughs> yeah. Oh, completely. And I think it's, you know, just remembering, it's like we've all, no matter who you are, if you've come out of the closet or you had to figure yourself out or, you know, you feel different in your, the larger society, it's like we've all gone through shit that, you know, we should be compassionate to each other and supportive. And it's like the fact that that's not happening is, um, you know, perplexing, I would say, at least, at the least. Um, so, yeah, I think, you know, we need more efforts to to bring people together and to make sure people feel supported. Yes, and, uh, and just try and work on it, you know, a little bit every day, so. <laughs> exactly, yeah. yeah, it doesn't have to be 180, but it's like, um, yeah, it all takes time, and I think part of it like is... fitness, progress, uh, little by little does the trick, you know, <laughs> progress, you know. Oh, totally. <laughs> yeah, and I think the more you can... You know, and, and I don't know, we don't have to go down a rabbit hole of all of this because I'm not an expert on it, but I think, you know, if you feel insecure or if you've also been through issues, it's like, it's, it's like the trope, hurt people hurt people. It's like, if 
you know, you're still working on things and you're not, you don't feel secure with who you are, it's easy to put down the guy at a gym who's bigger than you. Um, so I think the more compassion can be extended to those folks who, you know, are kind of putting people down and then also just, you know, help people help themselves. So it's like the better you feel, the more secure you feel, um, the more you're working on yourself for legitimate reasons to feel better about who you are, I think that will just ripple out to the whole community. Right, right. Wow, wow. So, can we talk about nutrition? <laughs> sure, yeah. I'm like, um, this is like my presidential stump speech. <laughs> no, 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 it's great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm always curious like, to hear people's uh, uh, you know, opinions about it and everything like that, uh, especially like now someone like yourself, do you advocate a special kind of diet or is there, uh, do you have any uh, advice about, uh, about nutrition? For uh, like your clients, or for you, you know people at your classes, or just everybody in general, like yeah, it's a good question. I mean, I'm I'm very like anti diet in general. Um, I think it's more about finding what works out works for you specifically. And I mean, if I had to kind of name anything, it would be like something like like the eighty twenty diet, where it's just like eighty percent of what you're eating, you want it to you know be whole foods, you want it to be you know high you know nutrient dense foods. And then the other 20%, you're not so uptight and you can kind of enjoy yourself um, and eat what you like. And I think that, to me, that's just more sustainable. And I think it, because we're all different, you know, that's the percentages may change. Um, but I think it's something to, good to aim for. Um, other than that, I just, yeah, I'm not, um, I'm very, I, I, there's a lot of science that, you know, proves that, you know, diets in general just don't work. <laughs> yes. No, like, I think, but I think we keep, but for some reason, we just, as humans, just don't buy into that. It's like, we'll just keep trying. <laughs> and I guess there's also a, a huge industry built around it, right? Of, you know, getting yes, yes. Pay for this information. Um, so, Opportunist, you know, an opportunistic industry, yes. <laughs> yeah, opportunistic. So I think it's, I think it's one of those things like, you know, I don't buy into a, a specific diet if it's not working well for you. I think trying things and exploring is really cool and can be helpful as long as you keep kind of checking in with yourself. And that's what I would do with clients where it's like we would, you know, explore different types of foods, tinker around to see like, okay, let's see if we swap out, you know, the bagel you're having in the morning, which I eat a lot of bagels. I'm fine with bagels. Oh, it is, uh, but, it is New York after all. <laughs> yeah. That, that, actually going back to your question about how I survived the pandemic, it was bagels, <laughs> you know, I, a bagel a day. No, but I think it's about checking with how you feel. So it's like, you know, just even for me now, I've kind of realized, okay, that's not really serving me in general. Like I love bagels, but you know, I'm not gonna have them all the time. <laughs> um, <laughs> if I swap that out for like, you know, protein shake that I love and have that in the morning, that may satiate me a little bit more. And then it may also just help me make better decisions throughout the day. Um, so I'm more into kind of observing and working with a client um, to figure out first of all, what they're eating and then what their goals are. And, you know, some people are fine just eating whatever they want and that's cool too. Um, but then if they want to make changes to, you know, keep course correcting, you know, try something, see if it's sustainable, see if you enjoy it, um, see how you feel and then just see how that impacts, you know, the rest of your day. So, you know, I don't think, long story short, I don't, I don't subscribe to diets. Um, yeah. Well, you know, it's a tough time because I know that a lot of people are cooking more and eating at home more, but there's also a lot more people eating a lot of takeout food, which generally is not known for being particularly healthy. And a lot of people to deal with the anxiety and depression that we talked about earlier, the feelings of boredom or isolation or loneliness, you know, maybe binge eating or, and eating too much, drinking too much, you know, possibly smoking too much pot. <laughs> and, you know, it's understood, you know, we need to have, we need to find our ways to cope, but. Oh, totally. You know, yeah, I think, you know, the, you know, the, the same thing we talk about fitness. It's like, have compassion with yourself. Know that life is just completely altered from what it was, you know, six months ago. Um, but I think we're at a point, especially if, we, if you're in New York, where things are starting to level out and it's probably a good time to kind of be like, okay, I did what I had to do to get through those months, but now, how, you know, how do I want to spend the next six months of this year? And if you want to kind of start making changes and start cutting out some of those things, like, 
over, you know, drinking too much or, you know, binge eating. Um, if you're not diagnosed, you know, a binge eater, if you're just kind of eating too much, um, there's definitely a distinction there. Um, yeah, I think it'd be a good time to just start kind of setting small goals and to kind of see, you know, what changes you can make and kind of have fun with it. And I'm a, hu I'm a huge uh, advocate of doing those in the morning. So don't try to change lunch and dinner. Don't try to change the ha second half of your day when things kind of go off the rails at work or, you know, goes off the rails of different emotions. Like do it when you have control over your day. So, you know, try to change your breakfast, try to incorporate something that may, you know, help you mentally, physically in the morning, whether that's going for a walk or trying a fitness app or, you know, trying yoga or doing your, you know, kitty, uh, kitty litter, um, <laughs> uh, arm presses or something, but do it in the morning. Well, it'll, it'll do until the real thing comes along, right? You know? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, do, I mean, do, do that stuff in the morning, you know, and also, um, track it and see how you feel throughout the day and see, cause I think part of it is you need to know that it's working and that it's changing what you're doing. Um, and don't beat yourself up when you're doing it because, you know, most people I know, if let's say you haven't been in the gym for a while or you haven't worked out or you haven't been, you know, cooking or eating well, it's like, as soon as you go to do that thing, your internal dialogue is, I need to do this more often. Why am I doing this? I should be going to the gym more. I should, 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 blah, blah, blah. Um, don't should yourself, as they say. Um, celebrate it, you know, in that moment. Be like, okay, I know I sh you know, probably should go to the gym more often, but listen, John, I'm, I'm doing the push-ups right now, so I'm doing the thing that you want me to do. Let's just be happy about that. So I think a lot of it is also has, you know, comes down to kind of the internal dialogue and how you're talking to yourself um, through any of these things, fitness, nutrition, et cetera. Right, right. <laughs> well, that said, do you have like any uh, particular foods? I mean, you mentioned you're a big bagel lover. Yes. <laughs> but do you have any uh, particular foods that you would consider like binge foods or just that you only have every once in a while? Uh... <laughs> yeah, I mean, to be honest, um, it's been interesting the, going through like the beginning of the pandemic. I think I have my own theories and maybe you do too. I'd be curious, but I feel like we we're regressing a lot to kind of what we did as children. I just found that I was like, I need, like subconsciously, I was like buying candy that I used to buy as a child. Like I haven't had in like 20 years, you know, like, <laughs> and all of a sudden I was eating Sour Patch Kids. And it's like, oh, I used to do that when I was a child. Um, I also kind of reached for things in general that I used to as a kid. Like I would, I started drawing more to deal with anxiety and all that. But um, I think during the pandemic, it was definitely like Sour Patch Kids and some kind of candy. <laughs> but I would say other than that, I mean, you know, I, it's, I'm a summer guy. I love an ice cream cone. Yeah. So that's definitely one of them. Um, but, you know, I think, again, it's, it comes down to like, you know, are you actually enjoying this thing? So it's like, if I'm eating ice cream and I'm going, oh, I shouldn't be eating ice cream and I'm beating myself up. Oh, I, I've gained weight. What am I doing? It's like, you're not going to enjoy the cone. So say, okay, this is what I'm doing because I deserve it and I want to do this. I'll have ice cream. And it's like, okay, tomorrow you know, I have my protein in the morning or I have my eggs and I'll go for a walk or something. And, um, all in a very supporting, supportive angle. Cause I think uh, <laughs> it's like, why are we making things enjoy you know, that should be enjoyable, miserable by like beating ourselves up while we're doing them. Yeah. I think it's just that it, it's, it's, you know, it, it's, it's the guilt, you know what I'm saying? It's like, that's why a lot, uh, a lot of us do like binge eating in private when no one's around because there's been people who we all know them and uh, in public, you know, they just like kind of like pick at their plate and everything like that. But. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, cause you've used the word binge, binge a few times. I would say like, um, yeah. I mean, if you feel like you are, you know, binge eating and you're binge eating often, um, speak to a specialist for sure. I mean, it's speak to like a nutritionist who specializes in eating disorders. Um, and maybe come up with a distinction of like, okay, you know, maybe I'm not binge eating, I'm just having like an ice cream, but I'm saying I'm binge eating, you know, and, and be careful of the language you're using. Yeah, um, yeah. Cause binge but, eating uh, is, yeah, because we should clarify, binge eating is technically like an eating disorder, so. Yeah, exactly, uh -huh. and I, I've just, you know, I'm no expert on that, you know, it's out of, outside of my scope of practice as a health coach, but there's a lot of uh, issues that are abutting when I work with clients where it's like, 
you know, you want to help determine if it's like disordered eating and you're just eating in, in different ways. And I think someone like that, who's maybe eating in public a certain way and then eating at home a different way that can be a disordered eating. Um, but there's, then there's like clinical eating disorders that you'd want to get treated and all of that. But, um, that, is, yeah, that's beyond kind of my expertise. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, now I know that you uh, post the classes on meetup. Uh, how can people find out more about you? We'll be posting the links, but in general, you, like I said before, you're going to you do three classes per week. Right. And, uh, yeah. Um, so I would say like the easiest places to find me are on Instagram. It's like my, my platform of choice. But um, so my, my personal like coaching handle is at coach.cub. So coach.cub. Um, and then my bear group is um, at pod NYC. Yes. And so you can find us there. And then on meetup, yeah, if you search same name, pod NYC, you can find us on um, Meetup, and then we also have a like a Facebook group as well with the same name. But I think like if you check out my Instagram, um, Coach um, it links to all these different places. And you, you're right, we do um, we are doing three classes a week now. So we're doing um, bear meditation at 8 p.m. and it's it's a guided meditation. So for anyone who's like, I've never done meditation, I'm not good at it, uh, blah blah blah. It's like I have an instructor who's really good at teaching it, and it's all guided, so you can just kind of sit in your bed and he'll do all that. You can follow along. Uh, and he's fabulous. And then he also does our fitness class on Wednesdays at uh, 6.30 p.m. Eastern. And then we have bear yoga Wednesdays at 7.15 p.m. Um, and then we also incorporate other types of classes. So we're doing a bear movement class once a month. That's kind of like um, movement stretch, uh, with a, a instructor who has a background in like ballet and um, oh, wow. dance. Yeah, so it's actually kind of, we don't like to say that it's dance because I think it turns a lot of people off, but it's it's actually really fun um, to kind of move your body and get out of your head. So that's nice, <laughs> you know? And then we also run, you know, other random classes that whenever we feel like there's a need or we'll try something out. And that's part of like that exploration I was talking about earlier of like, what kind of classes do people want? What do they need right now? It's changing with the seasons. More people are busy now. So maybe finding, you know, some kind of socially distant outdoor activity at this point would be good. Um, but typically when we're in the studios, we do all of that plus cuddle piles and massage events and self-care events and stuff. Yeah, it's kind of hard to do a cuddle pile virtually, right? <laughs> I know. Somebody asked me, like, if we could figure it out. I was like, I don't even know, man. <laughs> yes well um, everyone hug everyone just hug themselves and we'll just lie together <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah well what is the uh, I mean what, what's the first thing you're gonna do like in addition to the classes going back to the studio what is the first thing you're gonna do when we finally open up and we don't have all these restrictions oh my god I'll probably just go around hugging people I'm like I miss, <laughs> I miss my friends I miss hugging people um, I would say beyond that like i look forward to traveling you know i i love uh travel and exploration and um you can't really do that right now so mm. hopefully get on get on a plane and go somewhere um maybe in the spring of 2021 or something <laughs> isn't that funny because i always ask that question that question always surfaces when i interview people what's the first thing you're going to do after the pandemic has yeah, after we get back to some kind of normalcy and everybody seems to have that same answer I'm going to just go out and hug as many people as possible, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, I miss it so much. And, um, yeah, it's it's a weird thing to to not be able to, like, you know, do use physical touch or, like, I'm big on connection and, um, you know, hugging. And it's just, like, I feel like my, my arms are tied when I meet see friends where it's, like, you can't really – it's very awkward. <laughs> And but doing the elbow thing, just I get it. It's functionally oh. fine, but it doesn't yeah. it doesn't have the same kind of impact that, as a nice big hug. So yeah, I'll probably be hugs, hugs, the cuddle pile for sure. I'm like, I think back in March or April, I was like, when we get back to the studio and we can do cuddle piles, I'm gonna do like a massive one where it's gonna be like <laughs> 50 people. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So. Well, 
there's no way for a man of my age to elbow bump with dignity, so I don't even bother doing that, you know? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you don't. Actually, I'll tell you what I, what I have been doing, because I don't like it. I don't like that. I do like the lunar, like the moon landing, like butt to butt. Really? Yeah, that's actually, that, I'm telling you, that would catch on in the gay community. Yeah, you just, you know, have pants on, but just touch butts. And it, it's great. We do. Yeah. Oh, I like that. <laughs> Virtually, it's not as good. It doesn't have the same effect as in person, but. Uh, well, I enjoyed it, you know, so. <laughs> there you go. You could pass uh, it along. Uh, yeah, yeah. Wow, wow. Well, uh, anything else you want to tell the masses? Anything you want to tell uh, everybody? Um, I mean, my final message is just like, you know, find, find little bits of compassion for yourself. You know, it's, I, I, I'm constantly talking to people who are still kind of beating themselves up. They're still being like, oh, I should do this. And, you know, I have to keep reminding them we're in a pandemic, you know, it's, although things are kind of coming back to normal, it's like, we're, we've, we've dealt with something really difficult. Um, so, you know, take care of yourself, have compassion for yourself. Um, and yes, seek help if you need it. Talk, you know, there's so many ways to find a therapist or other people who can help you or find groups or reach out to guys like yourself who, you know, are supportive. Um, and yeah, come together and the gay community needs to support each other more. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> wow. And uh, also, um, it's interesting because uh, a lot of people say, well, I've never, uh, you know, a personal trainer. They, they're kind of like intimidated by that or they think about getting like a fitness coach or a lifestyle coach and they worry, they're like, oh, it's too expensive. Oh, I can never do that. Oh, I could do it by myself. And I tell people, I'm like, well, how much can you put a monetary value on your own health and wellness? That there is no monetary value. That's priceless. So definitely consider that and consider like reaching out. Cause oh, it's normal. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I mean, it's, it's one of those things where, you know, you can just kind of prioritize where you're spending your money. And yeah, I mean, most clients I work with, they end up saving the money because, you know, we work on, you know, cooking at home and <laughs> observing, you know, how they're spending is, but do it in a fun, sustainable way. Um, yeah. And, it, you know, you say, save on medical bills and you can, you know, invest in your future and, and not even just your future, just how you're feeling in the moment. It's like, you know, it's valuable to have energy and to, you know, be in a relatively good headspace. So um, it's, I think it's worthwhile. And most people do free consultations like myself. So you can always yes. do an hour with me, and kind of collect your thoughts. And I've had people who I've sat down for an hour with who end up like not going, you know, not uh, hiring me as a coach, but they went on to like work on themselves and, you know, lose weight or do whatever um, was good for them. And it, I love that. It's like, you know, I'll hear from them a year later and like, I'm actually in a much better place. It's like, that's awesome. Just from one conversation and then their own effort. So um, yeah, find, find ways to make it, you know, economically friendly for you, or at least, you know, figure out ways to be able to invest in yourself and reprioritize you know, where you're putting your money. Wow. All righty. <laughs> well, I think we all learned a little something today. And uh, we learned, uh, among other things, that uh, there's no such thing as a diet. Just throw that word out of your memory and uh, <laughs> out of your, not memory, out of your lexicon, you know. And uh, again, emotional and physical well-being and fitness go hand in hand. Don't be afraid to ask for help. And Damn it! Don't be afraid to try something new, you know, because that's how we discover things. So, uh -huh. Yes. Yeah. Have fun. Have fun. Have fun with it. I mean, that's the fun. My final thought too is like, you know, fitness. You know, working on your mental and physical health. Like all these things can also be really fun. I think we just, you know, we have a, this image of like I have to be on a treadmill. <laughs> no, go for a walk. Explore your neighborhood. Do a random weird class. Like I do laughter yoga or like go do, you know, go swim or, you know, find a fun recipe to make, you know, that may taste good and also be good for you. So there's, there's so many ways you can make it fun. I just think we have this like old school view of what health and fitness and wellness is, you know? Mm -hmm. We also continuously find ways to improvise too. Like I've learned, uh, oh, oh, let me show you, let me demonstrate. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Necessity is sometimes the mother of invention, you know, so... I found that uh, you get a walker, and you could usually find these. Almost always you could find one at a garage sale or a thrift shop. Uh, find an old one. It doesn't have to be new. 
but they're a great way to do your dips. Yeah, you know, well, to do your dips, but also to do your um, squats too. You know, you gotta. I love that. Make sure you keep your back straight. Yes. If people see this in your apartment, they will immediately ask, "What happened to you? Why are you using this?" But it does <laughs> fold up. Yeah, they're supposed to be good for your butt, obviously. Everybody hates oh, yeah. squats, but you do them. <laughs> and then there's the dips because the dips are a great way to lift your own body weight up. You know, and it's hard at first, but they get easier with practice, like everything else, you know? I love that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, again, necessity is the mother of invention because, <laughs> you know, I came up with the idea by accident. And uh, again, you could probably find one of these, uh, not, not that I would want you to inherit it from a relative, you know, who uh, passed away or anything like that, but, <laughs> or steal okay. one from someone who needs one, but. <laughs> So. Oh my gosh, I love that. That's too funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, again, this is all until hopefully we can all start going to the gym again. And I really look forward to actually hanging out with you in person. So I would love that. I yes, wait. yes. Well, and we'll be able to so hug. We'll, we'll probably still do the lunar butt kissing, but we'll hug too. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yes. Uh huh. <laughs> Why not?